So someone had a question about the um, total shear stress across the boundary layer and, and the slides that we had uh, covering this and someone wanted to for me to explain um, how do we arrive at the approximation um, on the slides. This is what I'm going to do now. So to start with we're going to take this slide and we're showing that um, we've got the Navier-Stokes equations uh, this time we've got the pressure gradient term in, we've got the convection pressure gradient and then diffusion in the x direction and diffusion in the y direction and uh, we're going to start making assumptions so that we can simplify this. We're saying that this um, is uh, a zero pressure gradient boundary layer. This means that our pressure gradient term goes to zero and effectively the boundary layer is neither growing or, or shrinking. Um, we're also saying that our uh, our, our boundary layer is fully developed, so it's not really <clears throat> there isn't much change in the streamwise direction, and so because of this, our d by dx terms uh, go to zero. Finally, we're saying that our convective terms are also small. If our convective terms are small, then this term goes to zero, and what we're left with then simply is the last term. So this is the diffusion in the y direction. And this is set to zero, as you have here. And if this term is set to zero, then you can see that uh, if this is the rate of change of this term is zero, then this term inside the brackets must be constant. And this is uh, where we start to have this uh, rule about the, uh, the sum of the molecular shear stress and the turbulent shear stress. This term is our molecular shear stress and this term is our turbulent shear stress and what we're saying is that there's a point at which the sum of the molecular shear stress and the turbulent shear stress is going to be constant and we're going to look at that by analyzing the variation of these two quantities near to the wall okay so looking at the next slide so the variation in the boundary layer looks like this. We have our molecular shear stress, which is in green, starts uh, at a maximum near the wall and very, very quickly disappears to zero away from the wall. And our turbulent shear stress, which is a, a, a kinematic constraint and therefore has to be zero next to the wall, um, is zero next to the wall, it rises very rapidly to a maximum and then slowly goes back to being zero at the edge of the boundary layer where y, y over delta is equal to 1. And so there's a point here where this, they, they exchange. And if we were to consider the sum of the two, which can be written or, or displayed by in red, the sum of the two is the total shear stress. And for a very small region, we can see then that, in fact, the sum of these two is constant. And this is where this comes from. And the final thing to note is that at the wall where the only non-zero shear stress is from the molecular shear stress, the green line, all of the wall shear stress then is coming from the molecular shear stress. So the expression for wall shear stress, tau wall, is simply the molecular shear stress. And this is something that we come back to later on.